Hi, in the hand we have flexor tendons. There are two flexor tendons each in all of these fingers. The index finger, middle finger, ring finger and the little finger. We have two tendons, those are the FDP which flexes the distal interphalangeal joint and the FDS which flexes the proximal interphalangeal joint because the FDP attaches here and the FDS attaches here so when they contract this is the action they give. So in the fingers we need to check for the function of the FDP and FDS. Let's say my FDS to the index finger is injured but then I might still be able to do like this because of the FDP. So we need to do this examination and see exactly whether the FDS or the FDP is injured or not. Uh, it's not necessary that the FDS is cut to have a FDP injury. If there's a penetrating injury from the side over here, the FDS may be spared, whereas the FDP may be uh, cut. So we need to examine all these uh, tendons for each finger separately. In order to check for the FDP, hold on to the uh, middle phalange and ask the patient to flex. So this is the FTP of the index finger. Do the same thing for all the other fingers. Hold on to the middle phalange in order to uh, stop the proximal interphalangeal joint from flexing and ask the patient to flex. So that is intact. Do the same thing on a ring finger and on a little finger. So the FTP to all my fingers are intact and to check for the FDS if I want to check for the index finger I will keep pressure I will ask the individual or the patient to keep his or her hand on to the table or the bed or on any flat surface with the palm facing upwards and will put, apply pressure over the three other fingers and ask the patient to flex the finger that we have left free so when I do this this flexion at the proximal interphalangeal joint is because of the intact FDS flexor digitorum superficialis. Now we can apply pressure on the index ring and little finger like this to check for the FDS of the middle finger and we ask the patient to flex. So I have an intact FDS to the middle finger. Doing the same thing for the ring finger by applying pressure on the index middle and ring by preventing them from flexing so this is the FDS of the ring finger now in, in the little finger you may think that I have a FDS injury because I'm not able to flex but then it's because of a very close um, tendon of the ring finger and little finger they are almost like running together so when I'm stopping when I'm preventing the ring finger from flexing my little finger also cannot flex at the proximal interphalangeal joint this will occur in um, a few of the people some other people are able to flex uh, even if the ring finger is stopped like this so in order to confirm release the ring finger and then ask the patient to flex now I'm able to flex at the proximal interphalangeal joints of the little finger This is flexion of the thumb at the interphalangeal joint by the flexor pollicis longus.